Now, people tell us that the Bible is the pure word of God. And they say, we should turn away from the Quran, we should go to the Bible. And my uh, promise to you is that as you read the Quran, you'll find a world of difference. But it is possible that some people are not familiar with the Bible. I often think that when people like Sam come up here and they preach to us that the Bible is 100% the Word of God, they're not quite familiar with the Bible. I would like to point out to you that in fact, if a book, if a book describes history by gratuitously including sexual imagery, those parts of that book cannot be the Word of God. And I would say that the Bible often does this. And one place in which it does this, and I'd have Sam read that out for you, is in the book of Ezekiel, in chapter 23. So I would ask Sam, as he's asked me a few questions, I would ask Sam when he comes up here next time to read for us from Ezekiel chapter 23 starting with verse number 1 going all the way to verse number 21. And if not that much then start from verse 11. And if he doesn't have time for that much start from just just read verses 20 and 21. Amen. We'll be okay. And uh, in fact why don't you read us from this children's Bible sure. so that Folks can be sure what is there in the children's Bible. Young Explorer's Bible, New International Version, I'll leave that with you. It'll be here when you come back. Just read for us from that. So now, in sum, folks, how much time do I have? One minute. One minute. In sum, what I've shown, in fact, is that although the Quran speaks very positively about the Bible, it also tells us where the Bible has gone wrong. But on the whole, the Quran gives us a very positive way of looking at the Bible. The Quran is not here to condemn the Bible, but the Quran is here to introduce light. You do not introduce light by driving away the darkness, but you introduce light by turning on the switch. And this is what the Quran and he asked me to read Ezekiel 23, verse 20 to 21, if I'm correct. I will read it, and then I have a passage in the Quran I will read on behalf of Shabir. And I want to ask him if he'll show this to his daughter. Ezekiel 23, verse 20 to 21. And this is not original with Shabir, by the way. Ahmad Didat made this popular. Ezekiel 23, verse 20 to 21. There she lusted after her lavers, whose genitals were like those of donkeys, and whose emissions was like that of horses. So you longed for the lewdness of your youth, when in Egypt your bosom was caressed and your young breast fondled. Now Shabir wants to throw this out for a shock effect. Basically, he thinks that Christians who read this passage will be shooken up. If that's the case, then he's going to have to toss out the Quran because according to Allah in paradise, he'll have 70 huris, and this is the description. Surely, for the God-fearing awaits a place of security, gardens and vineyards, and maidens with swelling breasts, like of age and a cup overflowing. Would you read this to your daughter? <laughs> I won't need it, I don't think so. Now, uh, Sam starts by reading the verse, and then he compares that with the verse from the Quran. But I wonder how many people really think that these two verses are comparable. What he said was there is a verse in the Quran which speaks of women have swelling breasts. And that's comparable with the verse which he read, which said that a certain woman lusted after men who had members the size of that, and whose emission was the extent of that like horses and donkeys, and that is similar to saying that a woman has swelling breasts. Moreover, the passage which she reads from the Quran doesn't actually mean that. The verse which uh, is looking at is from uh, Surah Ammiyat Sa'alun, which says, Inna lil muttaqina wa faza, hada'ika wa a'naba, wa kawa'iba turaba, wa ka'san dihaka. You ask me what I teach that to my daughter. She has memorized it. All of my kids have memorized it. In fact, I will take you to the school where my kids have attended and I'll show you that kids this high have memorized it and they're studying that and they're understanding it. Kawaib actually refers to attractive women and that is promised to men in paradise. Yes, we're not ashamed to say that the Quran has promised men to have women in paradise and that helps us to avoid having women here outside of marriage because we know we're going to have it there. But those who think they're not going to have it there are often having it right here. <laughs> Now I want to ask you, has your daughter memorized the verse which you have read here? And I want to know how many people have memorized the verse which was read here from the Bible. 
On the other hand, how many people have memorized the verse which was read from the Qur'an? There you go. How many people would teach that to their kids? Yes, we teach that to our kids. In fact, many young kids all over the world have memorized the entire Qur'an. We recite the Qur'an without shame. Secondly, he talks about kawab and what it means. I didn't give this interpretation. One of your premier Muslim commentators, Ibn Kathir, said that kawab means swelling breasts. And then you're trying to say, well, it's a distinction and a different meaning from Ezekiel. You're exactly right. Whereas Ezekiel, it's metaphorical and spiritual. Talking about Judah and Samaria's apostasy and idolatry. Here Allah speaking literally, you're going to have sex debates in paradise. Something you need to deal with. Will there be sex in paradise? Yes. Now I ask the Christians, what will you do in paradise? Play the harp and sing hymns? <laughs> in fact, when Jesus spoke about the kingdom of God, He spoke about a kingdom which in some ways resemble our present kingdom. And if you think the sons of God in heaven do not have sex, then what were they doing in Genesis chapter 6, mating with the daughters of, of men and producing the giants of old? No, there will be sex in paradise, there will be food in paradise, we'll have this in a different existence. It will not be the same existence here, where there is a foul smell and where there are negative effects that come from it. The pleasure will remain, but not the pain. Now what about uh, kawaib? It doesn't matter if a Muslim said that. It is true that kawaib refers to women who have come to that age where their breasts have swollen as opposed to young girls who do not have that. It is a word in Arabic depicting this level of age of growth, of puberty, of teenagerhood. And that is what is promised for men in paradise. That is the word. It says that the men will have kawaii. They will have this kind of woman, which means attractive women. What's wrong with saying that men will have attractive women? On the other hand, Ezekiel says that this woman had uh, sex with these men whose members were like that. Why do you have to find out what the members were like? Which author was finding out what the members of the men were like and the emissions were like and writing that in the book of God? You tell me that this is the book of God? No, I don't think so, folks. And he said, I produced that for shock effect. But indeed, the Christians are shocked. They don't realize that something like that is there in their Bibles. And they have to now, except for a few who are shouting hallelujah in the front. <laughs> now, I have to leave it then and come back to you in the next uh, uh, segment when we'll conclude this important debate.